Hey folks, welcome back to episode 5 of my trapping season. First, I'd like to thank everybody for watching my videos so far and leaving comments and suggestions and questions and, and just liking the videos. Thanks a lot. It is the middle of February in Pennsylvania, and if you're anywhere near the northern part of the country, you know it's been pretty cool out lately. So, I have not much of a reason to be in my shed right now other than making a video, so I just thought I'd hang out here in my man cave. And I'm still catching a little bit of stuff. It's cold and it's tough, but uh, I'm still plugging away. If you're still out there hitting it, uh, good luck to you. If you've wrapped it up for the season, I can understand why. Before we head out onto the line and checking out a few catch videos and see what's going on out there, I'd like to do a little... Uh, I guess a little review or a plug for a product I just purchased well a few weeks ago so I've used it for a while out on the line I bought a new headlamp I purchased quite a few of the cheaper models like 10 15 dollars and not like this is real expensive it was 40 bucks at Lowe's it's the Coast HL7 Pro model I believe they have an HL8 out now it's rated at 285 lumens and it has a lifetime warranty for 40 bucks it does what I need it to do. It's a lot brighter than some of the uh, the ten, fifteen dollar model, like I said, that I have. It doesn't have a lot of flashing lights or anything on it. It basically has an on-off switch. Press the button, turns on. It does have a tilting mechanism here. It's built pretty solidly. I know it's built in China, but it's hard to find stuff that's not. So on-off. It also has a focus where you can have narrow beam or wide beam. I don't. I'm, Hopefully you can see that coming in and out. I usually just leave it on the narrow beam when I'm checking my line. And it has a dimmer switch on the back. Slide it that way and it gets a lot brighter. There's the brightness. Probably doesn't do any justice in here, but if you had one out on the line or in the nighttime, you would see. It's, it's a pretty bright light for 40 bucks. I'm sure that if you spend $150, $200, you can get something a lot brighter. But for what I need it for, it works great. Uh, one thing I will say about it though is if you leave it on the high power, it will chew up a set of batteries pretty quickly. So what I do, I just leave it on low when I'm walking around. And then if I want to look over at a set or if I need to dispatch an animal or whatever, I turn it on high, do what I need to do, and then I turn it back on low for when I'm just walking down the trail. So not a bad little light for 40 bucks, really. I'm, I'm more than happy with it. So, yep, like I said, season's coming to a close. I have this video and probably one more wrap-up video. Uh, got a few catches I'm making still, so let's go on the line and see what's going on. Well, I came here this morning and I followed these fox tracks for my truck. Here's my urine set here. These sets got rained on like crazy. There's my pan right there. Fox track there, fox track there. And he walked down to two other sets down there in the corner and walked right on top of both of those as well. I'll get a video of those when I remake them too. Here are the tracks on my second set. Right over there is where the scent post is, urine post, whatever. I got a trap right here. There's a track, red fox, I'm almost sure. Track right there, track there, track there. Got a mound here, a couple holes with lure in it. I got lure there and lure there. And I got lure in a hole there. And over here, Got a dirt hole. This is where I caught a red fox earlier. I don't know if you can see it very well. There's a track there. Track and track. Right there is the edge of my trap, but he was right on the pan. Or she, I don't know. And right over there is where I caught the gray. So this is a good area. Hopefully in a couple days I'll show you a picture of another fox here. Well, I see some eyeballs down here. Not sure if it's what it is. It looks pretty low to the ground. I don't know if it's a 
cat or fox. I think it's a fox. I caught a fox. Got a, a nice little red fox there in a urine post set. I have tracks all over this one time when it was frozen. And this is my third red fox of the year. I got to get this guy dispatched pretty quick. I do have a cable restraint right up here in a little trail. But got me a red fox there, one and three quarter bridger. Uh, warmed up and saw some eyes. I, I was thinking it was going to be an opossum, but this is way better than an opossum. So I'm going to go down there. I got a couple more sets to look at right down here and get this guy dispatched. I don't have time for a remake, but I'll be back here tonight remaking this set, definitely. All right, folks, so it is February the 1st, and I'm still having a good time trapping. It's tough, it's raining, warm, cold, freezing, everything, but I'm having fun. <clears throat> All right, here's my uh, red from this morning. Definitely not the biggest red fox I've ever caught, but it's another fox. I thought I was going to get away without washing it, but it's really, really dirty here. So, hopefully when I get it skinned out and washed up and stretched, it'll look a lot better than it does now. So, maybe I can get a couple more furs in the shed and make me happy. Alright folks, uh, here's the remake of that set that I caught the red fox in this morning. Basically an old log that was sticking out into the edge of this field runs right up along this tree line here I already caught a red fox in a dirt hole over in that area and I caught a gray fox in a cable restraint right down there and there's a fence row it just comes up along here runs the whole length of this field and that log was just sticking out here so I put a little urine and a little bit of some lure my brother gave me it was a uh, night owl red fox bland lure a little bit of that on there and so i got the remake done it's got peat moss on it a couple little stepping sticks there and hopefully i can connect again here that'd be great okay i got a got my second skunk same location it was quite a while ago when i caught the first skunk here I got it skinned out. This one is sprayed a little. It's not horrible right now. I'm going to try to shoot this thing through the lungs and hopefully it doesn't spray anymore and I'll be able to get this one skinned out as well. Uh, might, if I get a good, nice pellet on it, might send it into Napa. I'm not sure. Hey folks, here's a skunk I got a few days ago. Uh, I didn't get a very good video of it after I skinned it out, but they got really nice fur. You can see this, the white stripes down here right through the, uh, the stretch portion of it. This will be getting sent to moils to get tanned up. Uh, I probably said this before, but don't be afraid of these things. Just You can see the bullet hole here. I shot it through here, and I think it came out right here. Went through the lungs. Didn't spray. Had a little smell, but just wash it off with some hydrogen peroxide baking soda and dishwashing liquid and it smelled less than a coyote really to skin it out I think it's gonna look cool hanging on the wall as well hopefully next year I'll be able to do some extracting of essence and maybe sell a couple of these buggers next year oh it is February the Oh my goodness, I don't even know. February the 4th, and caught a uh, raccoon in the in a flat set. And uh, he is mean. Got him in the hind foot on a one and three quarter bridger. He doesn't look all rubbed up or anything. I mean, his, his hind legs all rub a little bit but he don't look rubbed at all so I'm gonna uh, dispatch this guy and caught those two skunks right over there this year so far 
and caught a raccoon right here now so get this guy out of here Hey folks, it is coming towards the end of January, and if you are from Pennsylvania, you'll know that I gotta let this bugger go. First fisher I've ever caught, and I think it's a big sucker. I don't know, I'm gonna put my hand by it for a little reference. I don't know, I don't wanna get too close to him. I'm gonna hold the camera down there and see if you can hear Making some type of noise, whatever fisher noise makes, I have no idea. But I gotta get this critter let go. So I got my, I came down here first, I didn't have my catch pole and saw it sitting there and I'm like, I gotta let this baby go. So I'm gonna try to release this guy. I got him in a number two bridger and did a real good job. Just got him by the pad and I'm gonna. Get the catch pulling this guy. I think he's going to be pretty mean though. So we'll see how this goes. Holy cows, he's big. <laughs> well, here, let's let him go here. I'm gonna try to release him. There he goes, oh man. There he goes down through there. Down the swamp. He's not a problem with him. So anybody that thinks that footholds break bones and cause blood and all this stuff, that guy is good to go. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed the section on the line. Uh, got one more video coming up. It will be episode six, the final wrap up video of the season. And if I'm lucky, I'll have a few more catches to show you. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them. And if you like what you saw, like the video or even subscribe. Appreciate it. Until next time, keep on the line and keep trapping. <laughs>